Hello, my name is Alyssa Bolster. And I'm Hannah Jean Lewis. And we are a research group for the 2021 NSF-REU Bioarchaeology of Bronze Age Social Systems. I am an incoming senior at Vanderbilt University studying anthropology and law history and society with a special interest in stable isotope analysis and bioarchaeology. And I'm a graduating senior at the University of Central Florida studying anthropology with a particular interest in mortuary archaeology and African American archaeology. Our goal for this project was to better understand paleodemography or the age and sex distribution of the communities interred in two tombs. Thunar 1 and 2 are located in the Emirate of Ras al Khaimah in the United Arab Emirates. These tombs were used to inter the dead during the 3rd millennium BCE. Both tombs date to the Umanar period, characterized by increasing sedimentism and oasis agriculture, including the domestication of plants like the date palm. By the end of the Umanar period, aridification and resource depletion characterized the transition into the Wadi Suf period. We hypothesized that Unar II would have a higher frequency of older aged individuals, or people who live beyond 50 years, compared to Unar I. We also hypothesized that our use of newly developed age estimation techniques, which provide more specific age estimates for middle and old adults, would reveal a higher prevalence of older aged individuals compared to previous demographic analyses. We base this on the fact that other research on agricultural intensification revealed higher disease loads along with higher infant and young adult mortality. Therefore, even though there was an overlap in use between the two tombs in the latter third millennium, we expect the tomb potentially used first, Unar 2, to have more individuals that live to be older than 50 compared to Unar 1 after date palm agriculture became more prominent. For traditional age estimation methods, we ran into our first major obstacle given the commingling of these remains. We had no whole skeletons to study, which are typically required for those techniques. And even further, we had no whole bones. They were all fragments. This meant that we had to select age estimation techniques that worked with such small fragments, and we settled on an adapted version of the Suchi Brooks phase system. This system allowed us to score the pubic symphysis, or the front part of the pelvic girdle, on a seven phase scale. These phases are based on degradation of the joint surface and correspond to ages from a known reference sample. We also attempted to estimate sex on the same bones using the Phoenix method, and this allowed us to pair age estimates with estimated sex for the individual bones. Then came the exciting opportunity to estimate age for bones that traditionally are ignored in demographic studies. Transition Analysis 3, or TA3, is a statistical software program created by a team of anthropologists based on known forensic and archaeological reference samples. At the time of the study's completion, TA3 was still in its final stages of publication and production, and from our understanding, the application of TA3 to a commingled collection was one of the first of its kind. Our use of TA3 focused on three bones, the pubic synthesis of the os coxa or pelvis bone, the humerus or upper arm bone, and the femur or upper leg bone. These bones were highly fragmented, but one benefit of TA3 is its specific feature-based scoring system. As seen here, we were able to sort through thousands of skeletal fragments to find bone fragments with at least two features present for scoring. We then put our scores into the TA3 software, which gave us an age estimate and a likely age range. We learned that while the proximal and distal humerus were an exciting new option for age estimation via TA3, it was not that useful in a fragmented, commingled collection. As we suspected, only having two or three features to score was not enough to get a specific age estimate. For example, while both ends of the humerus delivered average age estimates in the mid-40s, the range for a single bone could stretch from the late teens and into the 90s. TA3 on the pubic symphysis and the femur produced more meaningful results. The average age at death estimate for the femur was about 48 years. For the pubic symphysis, it was about 40 years. This was an exciting find given that the Suchi Brooks age estimates from the same pubic symphysis gave an average of about 31 years. One of the major complaints of Suchi Brooks is the problem of age mimicry, or the idea that archaeological samples mimic the reference sample that the system is based on. TA3 claims to avoid this, and while we cannot be sure that our TA3 findings completely solve the age mimicry issue, we know that our results are not simply mimicking the Suchi Brooks reference sample. We did not find any statistically significant differences in age distributions between the two tombs. This does not directly align with our hypotheses, but the small sample size for Unar 1 may be behind this. When comparing Unar 1 and 2 to multiple archaeological sites from the same region and time period surrounding its use, the tombs had significantly more older aged individuals than the majority of them. 
This makes sense given that we are now using a method designed to identify older age categories that prior methods could not identify. Further, we certainly found more older aged individuals than previous analyses at Schimmel for both tombs, given that original demographic reports, which estimated age based on teeth, found no adults in the old age category at all. We found no significant differences between the age of females and males within or between the tombs, suggesting that both live to older ages. Overall, we find these results to be very useful for framing our understanding of life in the Umanar. While many assume that life in the prehistoric world was always short, thanks to the application of innovative new methods of age estimation, we have found that at least some individuals in the Unar 1 and 2 communities lived into old age. This suggests that despite the intensification of agriculture, aridification, and other major social changes happening during the third millennium, community structure at Schimmel remained resilient, and that living to older ages was possible for those interred in both tombs. We would like to extend our thanks to our project mentor, Dr. Sharon DeWitt, and TA3 expert, Dr. Sarah Getz, for their advice through our project. We would also like to thank the National Science Foundation for funding this research, our wonderful project leaders, Dr. Jamie Ellinger and Dr. Leslie Gregorica, for their aid and patience, and our TAs, Tessa and Anna, for their help.